All right, this is the second video of the Snowman series. And in this video, I want to start looking at texturing, uh, particularly dealing with uh, the material that looks like snow. Uh, so I've gone ahead and created a terrain. And to give myself a sense of scale, I'm going to go ahead and create a snowball that's about three foot in diameter. Um, that would be a radius 1.5 and really quick I just want to go beat it up some uh, now to create a material for this a material is what my uses to calculate uh, glossiness reflections how the light diffuses or bounces off uh, if, if something looks matte or shiny so let's uh, to create a new material I right click the object let's get out of the sculpt brush right click the object and I'm going to go down here I don't know if you can see there it says assign new material it's right under material attributes it may be off screen that again assign new material gives us a long list I want to select a blend the default is actually something called a Lambert it's a matte material which does not have specular highlights or any kind of glossiness any kind of reflectivity but uh, a blend will allow us and you can tell already how this is a matte material no it's not really uh, reflecting light and this already looks wet or plastic so that's a Lambert that's a blend and if you select your object in the attribute editor here uh, if you go all the way to the right that's where you'll find your material for that object so with this new blend I can begin to change the color I'm gonna make it a really light blue just a hint of blue uh, you can change transparency diffuse is how it scatters light so no diffuse uh, absorbs all the light lots of diffuse it reflects all the light uh, snow is pretty f uh, diffuse material um, eccentricity has to do with this little glossy spot uh, it's called a specular highlight you can tighten it um, or you can switch it off uh, or you can kind of broadcast it more and the intensity of that is your specular roll-off so I could dial my specular roll-off and I think but this kind of affects specular roll-off so I might just take that back to black for now we can come back but uh, where were we uh, so I was, um, we're looking at attributes here and these sliders let me tell you a couple things you may not know about the sliders uh, they usually have a min and max like this is zero and it can go up to one however that's just kind of the default settings. What if I want to go further than one? It won't let me. I, I can actually type in a value of more than one. I can overdrive these attributes and hit in something like two. And then my slider resets and now two is the middle. Now it'll actually go up to four. So don't feel like you're limited by the extent of these sliders. I don't think the snow you're going to get tight specular highlights. I think it's going to kind of be more diffuse. Specular color is kind of the color of this uh, light here, so you can dial it down or up. Uh, the reflectivity, I don't think our snow is really going to be reflective, but I'll, I'll keep a little bit in there. And you won't see the reflectivity in the render we're using until much later. So we've created the material, we've set the color, we've uh, set the diffuse, and each material uh, in that long list I pulled up earlier is going to have different attributes. All right, so moving on. The bump map is a map. Some of you who've worked, done kind of video game models and whatnot know what that is. It uh, creates relief texture on a model, and uh, it's it's tricks your eye through something called normal maps. Uh, but to create that, we need to we can click this chip here and assign a map to this. We can pick one from one of the Maya uh, texture nodes. So I click this chip here and these are different um, 
texture op options and I want to go with the noise. So this is the bump applied. See the surface level indentation. So the idea is we want to tweak attributes until this looks like snow, which it doesn't really look like snow now. But we can go to our snow material and uh, these are your inputs and your outputs. The, one of the inputs to the snow material is a bump and uh, that's the bump node and you can change the depth of that bump like give it a value of one um, I'm sorry we had the wrong material selected we're on blend two uh, and this noise and where is my bump All right, here we go so it starts off as this is a level one we can dial it down to point two and notice how it it kind of dies it down you can even do negative values and negative one and what seems to be coming out will go in um, so I'm going to keep it at a value of one now we'll dial this down later let's look at the noise attribute and this is where we start tweaking to make this look more like snow and uh, you, you can kind of see what the threshold does uh, it uh, with none it's pretty uniform it makes these kind of smooth splotches the amplitude is kind of the it kind of re reacts like the the bump value bump depth so that's that'll be useful later uh, the ratio is kind of the size of each one of these uh, noise looks like it's a bunch of so the finer we get and we could probably overdrive that but uh, before we get too far down here there's actually a noise type and this is called a billow it's how it calculates this I, I want to change this to something called Perlin noise and it just gives you a different effect there's also wave and wispy I found wispy and Perlin noise probably Perlin noise creates the best snow texture in my opinion uh, after we change a few things so uh, let's take a look at what I what I did so uh, I'm looking at my main blend here and I want to take the eccentricity up uh, I, don't, I don't want such a concentrated highlight I want the eccentricity probably about halfway um, the spec the roll off I want to come down uh, it's in uh, specular color and we don't really need that reflection there uh, going to the bump node uh, I put the bump depth um, kind of light kind of subtle somewhere between 0 0.2 that may be too light maybe 2.5 and uh, then the noise the values I ended up with was a threshold of get a few little splotches in there uh, 3.9 the amplitude looks good the ratio is around five and a half and what made the difference was this depth map that uh, was what was holding me back before because I had a low depth and it, it wasn't giving me the the fine detail that I needed so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this uh, tutorial here and I want you to try creating a snow texture uh, using the noise material and uh, um, and again just play around with these attributes and the way I was able to see textures uh, just as a review 4 is wireframe 5 is shaded six is with textures okay so you hit six and it allows you to see the preview and then uh, you can edit these on the fly and I'll end this tutorial here and the next one I'll actually show you the interactive preview render and start looking at lights